figures. They ain't even salary. Them bitches is hourly. They hourly, not clocking the dough that you expected for them to clock. You ain't even clocking that shit. You hourly, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then they're gonna talk about, oh, they gotta have a car. Bitch, you riding the bus. How how you telling somebody they gotta have a car, bitch, you riding the bus? What? Oh, they gotta have their own house. Bitch, you in a you in a a, a a studio apartment or a two bedroom apartment. You got roommates, bitch. You ain't even living by yourself. And Joyce is like, well, that's why I want. I can jump over here and strangle you for introducing them. Ty got a big head and he's short. Candy got a big head and she's short. You ain't hooked them up. You why you ain't hook her up with someone like a lawyer or one of your doctor friends? You gonna hook her up with one of the workers? I'm like, damn, damn, Mama Joyce, what do you do for work? Joyce comes in and she's like, hey, Ada, you're such a, mm, let me think of what else, so what can I say to this boy? Handsome boy. Ada, like, I know. <laughs> he like, uh, what you doing here, though? Like, he get that attitude, like, what you doing in my mama's office? Right. Apollo's like, yeah, I'm in my office, too. And then in, my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, what office? Like, you know, I'm trying to think, like, <laughs> You know, it's like it's like uh, Martin Lawrence with uh, with Tommy. You ain't got no job, man. I'm forty thousand subscribers richer. As far as you know, people actually follow me. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for sticking around and tuning in because I know a lot of people dropped me, and then a lot of people came back, and then a lot of people are new. So if you're new or if you're old, thank you so much for sticking with your boy. Drive a roll up the partition, please. I don't need you seeing Yonce on her knees. What's going on, y'all? I'm Wesley from AK Nation TV, the network, the one channel on YouTube where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. Ask Dodd is the acronym for that. Um, shirts and apparel for all my crazy antics and my characters on A Connection TV are located below in the more info box. So click on that link if you want to buy some cool apparel for Chrissy Moss. Yeah, and um, I'm 40,000 subscribers richer as far as you know, people actually follow me. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for sticking around and tuning in because I know a lot of people dropped me and then a lot of people came back and then a lot of people are new. So if you're new or if you're old, thank you so much for sticking with your boy. All right, this particular video is going to be about Roa. You read the title, which is why you clicked on. Okay, like this video real quick and subscribe to A Connection TV, all of which are very easy to do. All right, this particular episode was was pretty good. Not not better than last week's episode, but this episode was pretty good because I like Real Housewives of Atlanta when there is a lot going on and there's a lot for you to be entertained by. And what I mean by that is every female is covered in more than one clip. You know what I'm saying? So this particular episode was really, really tasty, okay? We start this episode off with Nene shopping, not shopping, well, shopping in her closet, picking out clothes for this Savannah trip that she has planned for all of the ladies. And, you know, of course, this is the opportunity for Nene to show Bo and show every, all of the rest of America what she has accomplished and what she has, uh, has in her closet, her walk-in closet, okay? With clothes with still tags that she's probably never gonna wear. Um, which is fine, you know, kudos to Nene. You know, I love Nene. It's, I'm glad that she's able to afford now, you know, and then Greg, you know, Greg is relishing in the, in the, um, the bliss and the heaven that is Miss Nene Leakes, the, the, the entertainment, uh, queen that she is, I guess. Um, I don't know what title to, I don't know what title to attach to Nene, but anyways, Greg comes in and, you know, of course he has to get his camera time. He's trying to be, you know, cool, laid back husband of Nene Leakes. And he comes in trying on some shoes and trying on some shades. I thought that was cool. It's nice to see them together and to see their marriage still working in the way that they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So that was cool. Then we move past that. And we are blessed by the young, talented, intelligent Aiden, who is three years old, and he is FaceTiming with his father, Apollo. I thought 
that was one of the best scenes from this particular season because Aiden is smart and it reminds me of the AT&T commercials where the kid, where the teacher is asking the kids these questions, or I don't even know if he's a teacher or whatever he is portraying himself to be in the commercials. But when he's asking the kid the questions, and you know, the best one is um, where she says something about raisins. And he's like, are you trying, are you trying not to be the cutest kid? And she's like, yes. And he's like, what, what place are you in? Kindergarten? It, Aiden reminds me of those commercials. So Aiden is very, very cool. You know, I kind of thought back in the day that Aiden was going to come out kind of like, eh. But he's proven to be smart. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But Aiden seemed kind of on the inside. Eh but now he's very intelligent. And I'm, you know, I'm, you know, because he's, Aiden is very smart. Okay? So he's FaceTiming with his father, and he's like, Daddy, you know, I'm just chilling in, in Mama's office right now. Apollo's like, yeah, I'm in my office, too. And in, my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, what office? Like, you know, I'm trying to think, like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like uh, Martin Lawrence with, uh, with Tommy. You ain't got no job, ma'am. It's kind of like the same kind of... <laughs> want to know what Apollo does, but he in the office. So whatever. He doing his thing. Whatever. I'm not. I'm just... I'm I'm talking the way y'all talking. Y'all know y'all been thinking the same shit. Uh, but, you know, they lose connection or somehow, but, you know, before they lost connection, Aiden made sure to tell Apollo to bring the big bike from Nana's house. So, out of nowhere, Joyce Sunshine wearing all yellow comes in decides, deciding to speak to Phaedra Parks for some legal advice about prenuptial agreements. But this, like I said, the AT&T commercials, these kids say the darndest things. Joyce comes in and she's like, hey, Aiden, you're such a, mm, let me think of what else, so what can I say to this boy? Handsome boy. Aiden, like, I know. <laughs> he like, uh, what you doing here, though? Like, he get that attitude, like, what you doing in my mama's office? Right. And so, Phaedra like, Aiden, aren't you going to say hello to Mama Joyce? Because Aiden just straight ignored her. Straight ignored Mama Joyce. Phaedra's like, Aiden, I'll give you some treats if you say hello to Mama Joyce. Aiden's like, I don't want no treats. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. I was like, damn, son. Aiden straight dissed Mama Joyce. That was funny. That was hilarious. That was funny. And then Faith was like, well, damn. All right. Well, I ain't going to force you to do something you don't want to do. Uh, go play with the assistant. And um, Aiden was like, Toya, can we go watch the trains, Toya? I don't know who Toya is, but Toya was fine. Toya, Toya can get it. What? Toya can get it. Ask Dodd that. Ask Dodd that. Adopt similar connections despite our differences with that. Ask Dodd that. Toya can get it. Anyways, when well, Joyce speaks to Phaedra about prenuptial agreements, and now I had a conversation with someone that I'm talking to. I know, right? Yay! Let's go ahead. I don't know how long it's gonna last, cause you know, uh, me being public and me being boisterous and you know, all of that tends to like one run my fuckers off, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm not, you know, just it's, it's in the new new stages. This is in the new new, the new new stage, you know what I mean? But anyways, shout out to you, boo. Um, yeah. So any why I'm smiling, why? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a jerk. Anyways, um, she talks about prenuptial agreements, and I had a conversation with my new new about um, not new new the YouTube blogger, but my new my new new um, about prenuptial agreements, and I and my best friend Tiffany Jones. I, I told them both. I said prenuptial agreement, and y'all y'all might disagree, but we gonna ask Don about this, okay? Before y'all, before y'all write me off and go all crazy about what the fuck I'm about to say, listen to me. Listen to me. Real quick, alright? And even if we agree to disagree, whatever. 
But I got an opinion just like y'all. It's like assholes. Everybody got an opinion. But just listen to what I'm saying. I hope y'all like this video. And I hope y'all got a damn snack or drink. Y'all drinking some liquor or something watching me. Get into this thought. The audience of A Connection TV were mature individuals that can think. Alright, let me get to the fucking point. Alright. I told my Nunu and my best friend that prenuptial agreements... Are you saying that you think that the love is not going to last? And because you know of many situations that occur in marriages today, you want to protect yourself against a love that potentially will not last. Therefore, in my mind, I'm like, okay, why the fuck get married? We're good where we're at. Why add marriage to that if you're thinking about a prenup? I don't get it, and I will never get it, and I will never understand. Okay, yeah, people change. 13 years from now, the, the, the bitch might change, the dude might change, the girl might change, whoever might change and want to move on. I get that. I get that. So you want to protect yourself, but at the same time, you're telling me that you don't think our love is going to last or stand the test of time. That's what a prenup is. And it's also you protecting your assets. Great. But I'm not marrying your ass because you have doubts about our love. Period. That's it. Okay? Same thing with a condom. Now, I hope y'all not dumb motherfuckers listening to me. Don't be a dumb motherfucker and listen. Listen, listen. People that use condoms use condoms for various reasons. The only reason that I think you should use a condom, if you're in a loving relationship, if you claim to love this person, the only reason why a condom would be okay is if you do not want to get married. Married, for those of you, you know. Married. If you do not want to get, I mean, not married, I'm sorry. Duh, brain fart. Pregnant. If you do not want to get pregnant, that's what condoms are for. Okay. But if you claim to be all in love and really love this person and all this and I'm in love and ain't nobody taking your place, then there's no need for condoms. Now, some of y'all might be like, oh, hell no, nah, fuck that. You don't know what he's going to be cheating and all of that. Well, then why are you with someone that you have doubts with? Why? Why are you with that person if you have these, these doubts and these thoughts in your mind about him or her cheating on you and possibly bringing you something back and, 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 and giving you salmonella in your sausage because your sausage has been sitting out for 19 hours? Why are you dealing with someone that you have doubts with? Why are you wanting to marry someone that you want to prenup with? Why are you having sex with that you feel that you have to use a condom with because you don't know what the hell they're doing out there? You should not be having sex with that person. You shouldn't. Now, if you want to get your rock stuff and you want to do that, that's great. No problem. No problem. If it's just a one night stand kind of fling, great. Use condoms. You're not saying that you love that fling. You're saying that you want to bone that fling. There's a difference. There's a difference. Nowadays, people use love as a scapegoat for everything in their lives when dealing with other people, the opposite sex, the same sex, whatever you like, cats, dogs, I don't really give a damn. But people use, oh, I love her, oh, I love him. And it excuses them for that moment when they use the word love. But when it comes down to laying sex, you got a condom. When it comes down to getting married, you got a prenup. That ain't love, I'm sorry. Love, that ain't love. Love means never having to worry, never having to doubt, never having to hurt, never feeling pain, and love is unconditional. Point blank, period. Don't use the word love if you got these second thoughts or whatever. But anyway, back to Mama Joyce and the prenups. I had, I had to go on a little tangent real quick. I really freaking adore Phaedra. The more and more I see Phaedra, the more and more she's maturing and, and realizing that she just can't act any old way on TV. And she's very respectful to Mama Joyce, but she's very respectful to her friendship with Candy. Because she's not saying anything inappropriate to Joyce about Candy's and Todd's relationship, and she's not picking sides. 
She's riding the fence, but she's being real nice about it to Mama Joyce. Mama Joyce, I know you my friend's mama, and I'm not gonna disrespect you, but I don't really understand why you're acting the way that you are acting, you know? I have a prenup. I didn't know that Apollo and Phaedra had a prenup, but they have a prenup, I guess. But, I, I guess. But, um, go ahead Phaedra, rock on with your bad self. But, I can understand Candy wanting to get a prenup. Todd is a great guy. You know, I introduced them, and then Joyce is like, well, that's why I want to. I can jump over here and strangle you for introducing them. Ty got a big head and he's short. Candy got a big head and she's short. You ain't hooked them up. You Why you ain't hook her up with someone like a lawyer or one of your doctor friends? You gonna hook her up with one of the workers. I'm like, damn. Damn, Mama Joyce, what do you do for work? I'm curious. I'm curious. One of the things that I, one of the things that really aggravates me about people in today's world is that they say, oh, I want the man to be like this, and I want the man to have six figures, and I want the chick to have a booty, and I want the chick to have breasts, and I want the chick to have, you know, long hair, and all this extra shit. Everybody always says what they want their person to look like, or their dream person, but no goddamn well, they ain't providing six figures. They ain't even salary. Them bitches is hourly. They hourly, not clocking the dough that you expect for them to clock. You ain't even clocking that shit. You hourly, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then they're gonna talk about, oh, they gotta have a car. Bitch, you riding the bus. How, how you telling somebody they gotta have a car, bitch, you riding the bus? What? Oh, they gotta have their own house. Bitch, you in a, you in a, 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 a studio apartment or a two bedroom apartment, you got roommates, bitch. You ain't even living by yourself. So how you, how you gonna want for someone to be or have this when you ain't that and you ain't got that? Don't even go to the gym and got rolls all on your ass. How do you have rolls on your ass? You talking about you want somebody muscle bound. I don't get it. That shit don't fly good with me, but you know, Phaedra handled that conversation quite well. Then we move on to, uh, we move on to, uh, Kenya packing with her best friend. I I, I can't remember the dude's name, Brant or Bryant or some something, something like that. He seemed cool, but then again, he I think that's the dude that ends up fighting with Kenya. So I don't really know. He kind of wishy washy. To claim that he's Kenya's best friend is a little bit eh, for me. Like it's nice that he he's a gay dude that offers some masculinity on the show. That's kind of nice to see. You know what I'm saying? Cause he has a little a masculinity to him, so it's cool to see that. And he's, I mean, well, he's not dark skinned, but he's fair skinned. I don't, I don't know what he is, but whatever. It's nice to see him kind of be masculine on the show. But my thing is, why is Kenya always having to dance? Why is she always got to and dance on this show? Like she's the coon of Roa. Like, how are you feeling somewhat great about that or grand about that? You said. Twerking in Savannah, twerking, in, twerk, twerk, the twerking in Savannah, twerking and twerk, twerk, and then the look, the poor dude goes to hit bang to encourage her. Boom, 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 twerking in Savannah, boom, 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 twerking in Savannah. What? Come on, son. And then the girl gonna be like, well, I, I could bring these thongs because Apollo ain't gonna be there. Damn, I really want him to be there. But Apollo ain't gonna be there, so I ain't gotta worry about Phaedra. I'm like, come on, can you stop? Stop right now. Like, you you look foolish. You stay making yourself look foolish. Then she gonna bring out the gun like she gonna do something with it. Phaedra. Bye, Phaedra. Bye. That's all I gotta say about that. Then we get to Porsche shopping, wanting to spend seven grand on some shoes. Them shoes look bad, though. Them shoes look bad, though. Then the girl gonna talk about, oh, there's only five pair made in the world. Bitch, how you know my size, though? How do you know my size? If you only got five pair of these, these elaborate 7,000 pair bitch shoes, how the hell you know my size? Talking about you want to try these on? Bitch, if it's only five, you got all five of them in this goddamn store. How do you know my size, though? I'm like, bitch, don't come, don't come with that. Don't come with only five made in the world. Don't come with that. She tries them on. Her stylist comes. I don't know why she got a stylist for Savannah, but whatever. No judgment. Ask. Dot. Okay? Ask Dot on that one. Then she gets some other shoes and those are like $3,500. i am like, chick, you on spousal support. 
Why your check is like five grand a month? Why are you already blowing out your check? Ask Dodd on that one because I I, I, <laughs> I can understand that, but then again, she at home with her mama. She ain't got rent. She good. She good. She ain't got rent. Whatever. Then we get to um, Candy talking to Cynthia about her conversation with um, with uh, Mama Joyce and. You know, this conversation was very heartfelt. You know, it's moments like this that reminds you that we are watching a, real, a reality TV show. Um, Cynthia was there for Candy. I thought that, I, you know, I'm really starting to appreciate Candy, Cynthia. I'm really starting to appreciate all the girls. I can do well without Kenya, though. I really can. I can do well without Kenya. But I'm starting to appreciate all the girls and the relationships that they have with each other because they're very open. They're very candid and they're very real with one another. And that's awesome to see, um, you know, all these seasons in. Because there's definitely been um, a, 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 a climax, you know, like they're, they're climbing. They're climbing the maturity level. So I really do appreciate Candy even feeling that she can go to Cynthia. Because, you know, that's just nice. That's nice to see amongst African-American people publicly in the media, like on TV, that's nice to see. So, you know, Candy starts crying and then Cindy had to go get some tissue. And then, you know, at the end of the day, Cindy is like, Candy, you just need to check your mother because if you don't, Todd's gonna leave your ass. That's it. Candy has a conversation with her mother and her mother just proved, just proved without a shadow of a doubt, she has no reason to, to mess around with Carmen. She has no reason to talk about Todd. None whatsoever. And then I watched the What's Happening Live or whatever um, with uh, Candy and, and uh, damn it, Candy and Fantasia last week. And, you know, Candy admitted that Joyce gets all of her stuff from Wendy Williams. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Wendy Williams is like the media takeout on television. You can't really trust what the fuck is coming out of their mouths. You just can't. You just can't. It's all 99.9% .9 of the shit is all hearsay, okay? And it's all like shit just to spark interest in some shit like, what? What? Like the stuff that Wendy Williams talks about, like nine times out of ten, if Wendy Williams hears that a spider was killed in the rainforest, She's going to relay the message that there are no longer spiders existing in the world. Every single spider has been killed off by Arnold Schwarzenegger and his mistress. Like, that's the type of shit that Wendy Williams talks about on her show. Well, I'm just saying. Anyways, I thought that was a cool conversation. Let's fast forward to this bus shit. With Cynthia, not Cynthia, Nene, you know, got this trip to go to Savannah. Okay. Uh, my Neek, my Neek is there first, I guess. That's Cynthia's, uh, 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 Nini's friend for 13 years. Then everybody, everybody is supposed to meet up at 11 o'clock. Now we all remember when Nini went the fuck off when everybody came late. So I can't even remember what she threw last season because I didn't really watch it last season. But when everybody came late, she threw a hissy fit. So, we all know now that Nene is trying to better herself with her attitude and the way that she presents herself to these girls. Kudos to, kudos to her for doing that. But we know how she can get. We know how her mouth is and we know she speaks her mind. Kenya brings her ass into the situation and she's like, hey, hey, I'm going with the wind, fabulous. I'm on time. Where's everybody at? Where are we? What are we doing? And then he's like, the girls are not on time. What time are we supposed to be here? 11 o'clock. Well, it's past 11. I'm the only one here. Girl, let me, let me get some food. Time passed. Time passed. Ah, ah, where's everybody at? Why they not here though? Why they not here? Ah, ah, when they get here, I'm cussing them out. Nene like, well, girl, I'm trying to get me all sized up. You trying to, you trying to get me all amped for no reason. Uh, uh cause this ain't right. We, when we set a time, we supposed to be here. I ran, got up, dressed, came out my house, took me an hour some change to get here. I expect everybody to be here on time. I'm like, can you shut up? That's what I'm thinking. Can you shut up? 
Because you of all people should not want to start drama when you are the butt of all of the dramatics that have been happening in this little circle that you begged, not begged, but that you wanted to be on for season two. So can you stop? Like, what are you doing? Did y'all like this video yet? It's free to do, bitches. Like this video. Ask Dodd. Adopt similar connections despite our differences. Because I know some of y'all may not agree with what I'm saying right now. But let's, let's get into this, okay? Cynthia rose up. Kenya checks her. Candy rose up. Kenya checks her, at least tries to, and Candy's like, boop, I, I slow your bro. By that time, Nene's gone. She don't want to deal with it no more. She goes home. Gray, get me the fuck out of here before I spaz out. Phaedra comes. By the time Phaedra comes, the, the, the dude that's riding all the girls to the, to the spot in the, in the country club is, is basically... So the dude basically reads Phaedra. Phaedra gets there. Ne uh, 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 Portia is there too. I forgot. Portia came before Candy or something like that. Anyways, Kenya wants to read everybody and Kenya wants to be the, the leader of these girls. All right, girls, let's go. Now, mind it, it was wrong as shit, yes, for all these ladies to be late. Fader didn't get her ass there till damn near 2, 3 o'clock. I don't even know if it was 4 o'clock. Fader was the last one there. These girls, it, it, it was mad disrespectful. Me, I'm going to tell y'all right off, right, off, right off the gate. I don't like waiting for no one whatsoever. I don't like waiting for anybody. If you late, I'm pissed. Why? Because I told your ass to be here at a certain time, so you're asking me to be here at a certain time. When you keep me waiting, that's blatant disrespect and disregard for me. Period. I don't care what you got going on. Shit may happen, whatever the case may be. Okay, call my ass. Shame receive a call, no nothing. Or at least that's not what we didn't see them. We didn't see nobody call Nene or not. Bitch, I told y'all to be here at 11 o'clock. Y'all ass is rolling in at 3? I would have left a long time ago. I would have left a long time ago. All the people that know me know I don't wait for shit. And if you keep me waiting, you, go, you left. You are left. Bottom line, that's one That's one of the things that irritates me about people. Like, if they keep me waiting, I'm done. So Nene's sitting there trying to be good, trying to keep the peace. I applaud her, because that shit would have been me. Don't come late. Don't come late. You late, bye. That's it. We ain't got, I ain't got time for you. I'm not waiting here for your ass. It was hot. They got flies flying around the food waiting for your ass. Your ass on the road. I'm talking about, oh, I want to go get something to eat. Or, oh, it was time. Fuck that. Look at your ass, look at the goddamn uh, the navigation and see how long it take your ass to get here. Don't have me waiting. That's, that's disrespectful, period. So I respect Nene for coming back and wanting to get on the bus. Nene didn't even try to check these girls. Nene's like, all right, I prayed about it. Let's get on the bus. Let's go. Kenya going to bring her nappy-headed ass on the bus and try to berate all these girls like she the one running the trip. Bitch, you ain't even the one running the trip. Sit your happy little ass going with the wind. A stallion butt having booty ass down somewhere. Sit down, girl. Ain't nobody checking for you. You sitting here trying to put, you always trying to put, see the thing with uh, uh, Kenya, she always trying to put her ass in the limelight. And it don't be that lime of a light. <laughs> and I know that ain't make no goddamn sense, but Kenya always feel like she got to be the popular one. Candy read her ass, read her ass, told her, ain't nobody got time to hear what the fuck you talking about now, so sit your ass down, because you're not going to sit here and yell at me like I'm somebody's goddamn child. I don't know. What do y'all think about that? I would have, first of all, I would I would have left. The bus would have left. I would have left them girls at the country club. I would have went to Savannah by myself. Or me and my neek would have went to Savannah. Period. Because I really ain't here for Kenya anyways. She came one time just to stir some shit up. She came one time for the cameras. That's it. She ain't even come to my motherfucking wedding. If I'm Nene, she ain't even come to my wedding. So I ain't really caring about her. But I'm just like, I don't know. At the end of the day, yeah, everybody got their problems. But don't say you're going to come to some shit and then show up late. That's just me. I'm Wesley from A Connection TV, the network. I want y'all to subscribe to my channel. Thank y'all so much once again for the 40,000 subscribers. Almost had 1,000 videos on this channel. Thank y'all so much for the love and support, for the instant messages, for the instant direct messages. Y'all being freaky, McNasties on that instant direct photo thing that people can do now. Y'all being, y'all being instant direct McNasties, but I love it. Keep sending them. Mwah. Anyways, thank y'all so much for the support. What do y'all think about this episode of Roa? Leave comments below the videos. I read all the comments. I love y'all. Thank y'all.